welcome all uh, now to our uh, pro thoughts webinar uh, and uh, uh, we we are going to talk on a very interesting topic called how corporates can engage okay in the covid times okay or any time so it's not really related to covid 19 times the world is definitely changing and so this is a, a attempt by uh, our uh, no organization pro thoughts in in bringing different perspectives and views on how the trainings can happen for corporates so 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 let's go into that okay for people who do not know me this is um, uh, no my my uh, kind of a brief profile um, there are some of you who are joining as i'm speaking so we haven't yet started so uh, so this is this is a brief profile about myself so let's let's start on on this and today's kind of topic i'm going to have a lot of statistical data so i'm not going to uh, preach uh, how to uh, corporates can do the training i think the lnd heads pretty well know uh, what are the challenges and what they need to do on the corporate training um, since we are experts in doing training and we are okay a little more cognizant on how to do the training and what are the things that you require maybe we will put our tidbits there okay uh, uh, to the people concerned okay so this is something which we are trying to put it from our perspective so uh, today's topic generally pro thought sessions are very expert oriented sessions on project management so we talk a lot of about project management uh, advanced about advanced project management agile project management and disseminate knowledge through our webinar series but this time we are going to talk our kind of perspective on why corporates should engage in trainings so um, I, I have put a little different perspectives and then um, one key slide about you know, what we think how the corporate should engage for training needs and then we have put a small kind of one pager case study how we have done it and just summarizing the things uh, we have also uh, put a question and answer session an interactive sessions at the end of it uh, we have also included some quizzes just to be more interactive in this webinar. Okay, so let's go into that. Okay, uh, just two minutes before uh, you no, know, we we uh, uh, go into the real thing. Okay, for people who do not know Pro Thoughts, we are majorly into e you know, learning services, and then we have online e learning, uh, which you know is working in the current scenario. We are established in six cities for classroom. We also go abroad for classroom trainings. And of course, one major thing is corporate trainings. We also have another site called topprojectmanagement.com. And that's where uh, we have some rich content on project management. So ProThoughts wants to be a one-stop shop of project management. And we believe that we are the experts in project management. So the topprojectmanagement.com is another sister site of ProThoughts, and um, they have bookstores, blog, webinars, okay, which we are doing, and we do some 10 to 15 webinars per month on different categories and different topics. So this is what we do, okay. And let's go into the things, okay. Okay, there are some more who have joined. Thank you all for joining the. Uh, uh the uh, no webinar so sorry okay so um uh, so i think the current context of the things we call it buka okay which is stands the acronym stands for volatility um uh, or uncertainty complexity and ambiguity okay 
And that's where all the organization and businesses are doing their business. That's how you need to steer your business to a possible destination. And this scenario is only going to be uh, more in that degree of VUCA rather than it's going to lessen up. So this is the context in which the businesses today are operating. So when I say volatility, okay, uh, what it means, you know, uh, so it is becomes a dynamic change in the business. Okay, uh, there is a ch always changing dynamics. Okay, you have thought about a possible destination. Maybe um, suddenly you need to pivot and change directions. That's kind of business environment we are working on. Uh, of course, COVID-19 is a pretty unexpected and a pretty volatile situation. Okay, uh, that's a very high degree, but okay, things like this, okay, uh, not exactly COVID-19, but things like dynamic changes, okay, um, can affect the business um, rapidly and you need to change direction on the go. That's where the business environment we are working on. Uncertainty, uh, if there are project management experts, okay uh, who are in the session today they understand what is uncertainty uncertainty i know what i need to know, do but i don't know the impact okay of doing that thing okay it can cost me uh, probably a hundred thousand dollars or it might cost me ten thousand dollars i don't know the impact okay suppose a person leaves the organization because he is not adequately trained i don't know the impact okay it might not impact my organization so much but it might be a critical thing i'm not sure uncertainty right that's what is uncertainty so if you if you if you understand the situation the event you can possibly reduce or eliminate uncertainty right it's it's a little more in control than volatility okay when i use the word complexity it is interdependence okay today's business are more global than local in nature and there are hundreds of stakeholders hundreds of events which are interdependent on each other okay even if you take any organization there are so much interdependencies to take a decision okay that makes the whole thing complex. I'm sure all the LND people are living in a pretty complex world. So what, how you actually take care of complexity? Complexity can be taken in a very simple terms by communication. The more you communicate and more you produce the clarity, the complexity can be reduced. So right procedure, processes, streamlining of the things roles and responsibility clear communication can reduce complexity and then comes the ambiguity as well so ambiguity is you have multiple choices but you don't know which choice is the best one you use your gut in ambiguity so you actually take a choice implement it see the outcomes or the results and then okay depending on that you take another choice or go ahead with the choice you have chosen so you actually iterate in in ambiguity so you keep on uh, learning from what you are doing right learning relearning learning real okay that's the situation we are in today VUCA. right and that's how the learning environment is there of today. If you take 10 years back, the environment was quite different. It was not so dynamic. It was not so ambiguous. Perhaps it was not so complex. There might be uncertainties. Today's environment is that and is going to change in more aggressive nature of VUCA. And that's where LND or the decision makers of corporates needs to take their decisions. So if I had to take, give you an employer's perspective, okay, um, on, on, okay, what, you know, they do, okay, employer's perspective, okay, I'm going to now put just statistics for you guys, okay, 
So if I had to, this, this is, and, and this is from various sources that I have collected or we have collected on the internet, okay? It is been said that, okay, there is a 218% higher income for employee, okay, who go undergo training versus who do not. So a trained person, okay, gets a higher income for the company. So that, that's something which is pretty good for the organization, right? If you see the top companies, I have been uh, alumni of Microsoft and Microsoft actually for induction, they actually had, I had a little like, more extensive training than my average employee. I went to uh, the Seattle Redmond campus and uh, you know, there was a three week extensive uh, training plus the India counterpart, we had a training. So I had almost a two month training. I got bored till I said that, okay, I want to go back and do some field on, on the job training. but but a lot of great companies actually spend a lot of time on training because this is the uh, kind of returns that you get. Also, it has been said that you get 24% higher profit margin who invest in training compared with the those who does not. So from employer perspective, training or, okay, the trained employees does score high for them. Okay, a quick quiz for you guys. Okay, any idea how much on average an employee spends per year, number of hours, okay, per year on learning new stuff? Any takers for this? You can type your answers in the questions panel, which is there. You can just type that. on average how many hours okay and this is not my take i'm i'm borrowing this stuff from the internet how many hours an average employee or a employee spends on learning number of hours any takers come on guys Okay, I, I, I wish I could announce a prize for you guys just to encourage you to answer. It's just that, okay, I don't have, but I, I would love for you to type something. Okay, somebody raised the higher, okay. I can't see anyone's answer for sure. Mm -hmm. Ah, Narayan has type, okay, 50 hours, okay, not a bad one. Okay, no one else. Okay, it is, uh, no, Narayan, I think, uh, no, it is like, to be the exact number they say is 36, but, uh, that has changed, but over the last 10 years, it has hovering around 30 to 40 hours per year uh, employee spends on learning. That's absolutely low number of hours, okay? But that's how it is. In some organizations which are not mature, that's not also the number. So this data is taken from the 500 fortune companies, right? Has e-learning increased in the last five years and taken over traditional classroom training in corporates. What do you say? Yes, no, 10%, okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so so the traditional training has not gone away and many people still actually do the traditional classroom training. 
it is 67 percent who do and prefer that although a lot of organizations have actually for their internal trainings they have they have started doing online trainings but the preference still remains the classroom training. right okay third question how many discover learning programs through managers and leadership what is your guess on that any guesses how many of employees discover the learning programs through managers and their leadership? Any guesses, guys? Happy to. This is a good, good question, according to me. And many of you might get the right answer here. Approximate. How many percentage? Yeah. Somebody has remarked e learning has grown to 300%. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. E learning has grown to 300%, but still, as per the surveys, it's not the preferred mode of learning. It has definitely increased a lot. Okay almost 75 percent of the people actually learn the programs or take up the programs suggested by the managers and leadership so they actually guide the employees for that 75 percent. that's a whooping high number then the the employees deciding for themselves okay although it has been seen that the generation next or z or millennials choose their own programs Okay, last question. For online training, do they depend, okay, on internal or external experts to develop the content? Okay, I will I will actually give this answer. For online training, many of the organization depend on external people to develop the content, but for traditional classroom trainings if they are doing internal they depend on, on the internal people to develop the content okay just a little tidbits okay many people would have been knowing this so i will proceed okay uh, some statistics some lnd there are some people from the lnd who are joined so great to have you guys and uh, the employees perspective the employees do care about training so um, so many people stay in the organization if they are properly developed they are given the you no know, things to do on the job training is valued but valued more in fact but okay 94 percent stay if they are properly developed okay uh, so 74 percent want to engage more and learn new skills in their professional work okay um, if a senior executive leaves okay a leadership it's a very high turnover cost okay and if not trained so if somebody leaves the organization there is a higher cost which is 213 to get a resource of a similar level back in okay so my perspective employees perspective or the takeaway of this slide is that employees do care about training and if not trained okay there is a high cost to the organization now the lnd's perspective i think it's a very challenging job for the lnd okay um, no no i have so far established okay employers want to train employees want to want to get the training done but what's the gap then okay uh, so the major gap is that the trainings are not effective okay many of the employees have said that the training is not effective and therefore you know the organizations or ineffective training has cost you so much 
in fact the lnd or the hr managers okay feel that 62% they are not meeting the learners demand it might be due to various constraints they are observing maybe they don't have the right content or they do not have the budget or whatsoever okay 38% feel the learning platforms okay uh, do uh, no only 38% manager feel that the current infrastructure meet the learning needs of the learner right okay 33% say that the content which is given to them to learn is not effective is uninspiring you don't go through that only 12% of the learning people apply the learning skills in their jobs So these are the challenges that you face as LND. You know, there are of course many challenges, but I'm just telling you these are you know, the challenges. Ineffective trainings, lot of uninspiring content. Okay, the learning objectives are not you know, great. Okay, the application of learning is missing. These are the challenges of the LND, right? So now. I have put another slide, okay, suggesting, okay, uh, what can be done, okay, to, okay, improve the training or reduce the gap. And this is specifically targeted to the leadership and the HR managers and the LND. And this is from some amount of experiences that we have inculcated during our training with a lot of corporates. Right. So uh, we we work with corporates, and you know, over the years we have found certain things which have worked, certain things which have not worked, and and that's why I want to disseminate this knowledge with you guys. Okay. First thing is that okay, can we make like okay minimum business increment? I, we have named it as minimum learnable unit okay uh, so minimum business increment is a nice business term nowadays used in the agile world okay so minimum learnable unit is that what is that minimum thing that you can do which can add value to your employee now i have said use it with the pareto principle so there are some kind of things now because we do project management i will give an example okay like schedule okay you do a schedule plan which you use 80 percent of your time in the projects which constitute 20 percent of things why don't you your team does scheduling properly can we only focus on developing a schedule plan with the right relationships and dependencies and therefore calculate the critical path so that you know where to focus your attention while managing a project this is one value so you know your focus is there for developing a schedule plan so you will have increased focus you know which are the tasks you need to monitor more closely than the others i will there is a specific value that we are going to add by that. So find out your minimum learnable units. And as experts of project management, we can help you with finding the MLUs, okay, for your training needs. Similarly, there can be experts in your other trainings, you can do that for that. The second thing which we, I, we would like to propose is that, okay, is there something that can be implemented or applied in your workplace or in real life situation or is it theoretical and my thing is okay my training is theoretical but you no know, the practice is something different can this good practice or the things can be applied so we need to analyze that okay not all Okay, so half of the trainings we do certification training. So the idea is to actually get the good practices done, whether you apply it in the current world or not, you get some of them to apply in the current world. That's the idea of certification. 
but there are some customized training and here what we do is that we do a pre study okay a little kind of a uh, you know pre training investment that we do and we get into understanding why they are want to do a training what is the kind of a core problem sometimes people say the symptom but the core problem might be something else so we try to find a core problem we have done it with skp we have done it with scg scg is a pharma company we have invested our time to understand what they really want okay and then design a content along that right so focus should be always on the outcome okay and get that wow moment so if i apply the training i do the schedule plan and therefore you know get my critical path i know that out of the 100 activities on the project i need to focus only on the 10 activities so my priorities are sorted out i know where i can focus my attention and therefore i can manage my project effectively that's a wow moment so can you get that focus on the outcomes is very linked to the first point right that's how you will do that then okay this is fourth point is related to the second point can we have personalized learning can we tailor as per your needs okay maybe i don't know how to know all this no 100 good practices okay five good practices apply to me and in the context of what i am working okay these are the options that will suit me okay i want to learn only on that okay i don't want to do a four day training okay i want to do say a two hour training can i do that i just want to know this of course personalized training okay the other aspect which we think and and many of the corporates still do not do there are handful of we have done with is after the training okay do you want okay somebody maybe it in your organization or outside your organization outside your organization helps because okay he will come with a unbiased attitude and he will only have outcome related goals he will not sympathize empathize with you because after a training he will just handle and support you whether you are evolving your way of working so that is very much needed and we have seen a marked difference you had you you found the training very nice you gave a very good rating you in you to covering certain things okay but out of a 10 member batch okay five member batch after you go to work are are doing because it's a it's a change okay and and change comes with a little pain okay so you said that okay i don't want to change i i i, I whatever i working was fine although what you said has in the training made sense to me but i still continue so here somebody should intervene and say that okay you said that you are going to do a schedule plan in the manner which was taught to you in the training are you doing that if not what is the reason what are the gaps some kind of coaching mentoring auditing can really help you we call it hand holding okay to evolve your way of working it can be a internal expert or external expert but i think there should be someone you can't leave that person on their own the other aspect which we we found which is uh, known and and which we i i personally think that applies in our company peer learning okay if somebody is learning and you know your colleague is learning and you want to hear from him what he has learned uh, your grasping power is much higher uh, than than some somebody else talking about so the interest instructor matters so okay we to peer peer is always good because you have conversations with him or a respected instructor who has been doing it for a while you know you will hear from so encourage peer learning that will be good okay and it's not necessary that you should have only standard courses you can mix it well 
you can have we have a one hour course okay or power lunch session online uh, or we can have okay a six day course you know it depends on what exactly you want to have the idea is to build the minimum value to your employees and for that okay okay i would focus more on the outputs or the outcomes outcomes is the benefit but outputs okay then the credits okay whether i i went through the motion or i am implementing what i learned is very important okay uh, so the last thing that you can do okay, whether the way you are working has evolved there are a lot of metrics to do that that will be pretty great because management is very much interested in that so how to develop the metrics can be another session but kpis can help you to see that whether the training has been effective so there are some things okay this is a how to do the trainings or and it's from the organization perspective not from our perspective i will give a a, 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 a nice case study and uh, you know our our uh, no our most experienced leader okay he is well respected in in project management circles saurabh parekh he had done a glenmark okay uh, a two day game based training okay a uh, glenmark as you are aware is a world leader in india okay no it's from india and okay it was done for the project management for their research division project managers for the research division we only played games there we only played games okay there was no theory at all through games okay we learned some things and um, there was a high level of engagement and what i heard from our trainers and and more importantly from the glenmark management is that they have not experienced such kind of training before where where you no know, the structure was just to listen here there was more involvement for two days it was a classroom a uh, face to face session so that's what okay what you're looking out for now the methodology becomes important it outcomes become important okay so discipline planning is what we got okay how to collaborate communicate within stakeholders okay uh, now what tools should you use to deliver reports okay what are some new concepts in managing schedule okay we got structured outcomes and normally we tell that you will learn this outcomes and you can actually use it in real life right so <clears throat> so this is you no know, i think you now we always believe in doing little things differently the content maybe the way we structure the content is different the way we engage the people is different and that matters in doing things so this is a very good example and and the head there was amit joshi we said that okay this is what is some of the quotes from some of our customers so uh, this is what you have so these are some of our recent trainings that we have done some sample okay we have corporate products okay so what we have done okay i would like to spend another 2 minutes on this slide okay and uh, so there are we have developed 33 corporate products okay and these are very structured products we have said that if you do this you will get this outcomes and you can apply this so if you can go to our prothos.co.in you will have all the details of the product how we are doing it what can be the outcome and you no know, everything is set 
also we have customized program but everything is set depending on our experiences on how we are going to do okay um, we are coming up with disciplined agile agile is a, 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 a no disciplined agile is a new kind of a toolkit that comes with pmi and it is being actually buzzing in the whole world and we are the first partners okay among the first partners in india okay to do disciplined agile and many corporates are liking it we are doing a free boot camp for our webinar on what is disciplined agile and how it will help your organization so if anyone is interested you can drop a mail to us and we can actually do a free session okay of a boot camp for an hour for your employees on what is disciplined agile right so these are some of the products that we have done okay we also have webinars like this and we have free webinars okay live free webinars on project management our topics this is an exceptional topic that we are talking on the lnd kind of structure but generally we have experts coming from industries talking about project management it can be a technical project management like what is contracts man project management it can be about agile it can be about design thinking so we have done we all all know no we have been doing 10 to 15 webinars uh, every month okay uh, we started a year back and we got tremendous response okay on that so i would encourage you to have your employees logging because this is free for some time at least and you can actually get a lot of knowledge you can visit www.talkprojectmanagement.com and, and get your free webinars just to tell you because this is a corporate presentation uh we have been awarded as the 10 best corporate training companies in india by ceo in such so here is something you know we 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 do one hour session during corporate breaks and some of the companies did like our idea okay they said that okay you know this is pretty nice one hour of you can talk about anything you know many people are taken for agile okay what is disciplined agile what is agile how you can help your organization we do one hour sessions during corporate breaks as well okay this can be a power lunch session that we call it you can follow us on okay on our social media we are pretty active on all linkedin and facebook to be more precise and you can get a lot of updates even youtube on what is happening in the project management world so guys uh no the idea was to help you okay uh to and and you know give a perspective on 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 training and how to do it in corporates so uh i just want to summarize okay before we open it for the question and answer session uh learning and development remains a key challenge and okay and it's most difficult amounts to spend and justify now i have seen okay and it happens within my organization as well uh, uh you no know, whether we are spending the right amount okay whether we are doing justice to the learners capacity it is well established that okay learning is a very important mechanism and it should be inculcated within the organization but how to do justice how to spend what amount it remains a challenge for many lnd professionals on top of it today's era is of vuca volatility uncertainty complexity and ambiguity and okay it's been said that the next survivors is of people who can skill reskill okay in this kind of a vuca market okay that's the skill everyone needs to develop is of skilling and reskilling learning new things and and you know doing something different okay uh today's business environment sorry Today's 
business environment said to be agile and the competition uh, may not be from the next immediate competitor. It can be someone who is not does exist and somebody can come and disrupt the way you are doing things. OK, so you need to be pretty agile, ready to pivot, ready to change direction at a short notice. Right. So although the training needs are justified, we all agree that it becomes brings a lot of positive and benefits. OK, the key challenge is, as I explained, to do an effective training and therefore, OK, the rules of engagement and seek a long term position rather than a short term position. OK, as a training partner, OK, we always try to do our best, but it should be a collaborative effort in my mind, OK, to to get the best out of training. It can't be a one sided effort. So if, if you're interested and you know, both the parties should, should give their best to make the training work and therefore you know, realize the outcome and the minimum learnable unit, the value of the training. So I, I have, you no, know, I, I, I try to cover in a nutshell, okay, why and what perspectives and I hope it was valuable for you guys. Okay, I would be happy to take any questions as such from you all. So any questions? Any questions as such from you all? Happy to answer any questions. Okay, in the absence of questions, okay, time is valuable. And you are, if as an afterthought, if you have any questions, do talk, write to us or call us. We will be happy to help you. Okay, for any of your information. I hope, okay, uh, this sort was in you know, valuable and informative for you. And I think I hope that the time was well spent. Okay, uh, with this webinar. Thank you all. Okay, for attending the webinar and have a good day. Thank you so much. Thank you.